Hello friends, this video on crop production and management part 15 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So because of these advantages came up the modern methods of irrigation. So what are these modern methods of irrigation? Now mostly there are two methods which are being used that is sprinkler system and drip system. So now we are going to discuss about these two types of systems in detail to understand how these modern methods are able to overcome the uh, these advantages that were associated with the traditional methods of irrigation. So first we will discuss about the sprinkler system and then we will take up the drip system. So sprinkler system, the name says sprinkler, it comes from the word sprinkle. So you would have often heard sprinkle water, that means uh, spraying water, spraying small amount of water all around. So as you can see in this picture, this is how water gets sprinkled in this type of system. You see this is your entire field and here you see these white dots, they represent the water coming out of these small pipe like structures. So the water gets sprinkled out and these are, have been established at a particular distance from each other. So let us see what is this. So here water flows out from rotating nozzles of pipes. So here you see you have these are the rotating nozzles. So it, it actually keeps on rotating and as it rotates the water coming out of it will also rotate. So basically wherever the pipe is located, let us suppose the pipe is located here. So considering that as the center, so all the area surrounding it will receive the water because the nozzle is actually rotating. So this is actually moving, rotating like this. Therefore, the water which is being thrown, that is also getting thrown in that entire circle, right? So that is how the sprinkler system works. So here what happens exactly is there are perpendicular pipes with rotating nozzles on top. So these are the perpendicular pipes and if you see they are all located at specific distances and these nozzles are rotating that is they, they move in a circular path. Now such pipes are joined to the main pipeline. So let us see. So let us see how exactly it works. Now let us imagine that this is the well and inside the well you have a motor. So here maybe you have a motor here and therefore the water is being brought up. Now once the water is being brought up and then this water is supplied to this main pipeline. So let us say this water is being brought to the main pipeline. Now from this main pipeline you actually have many perpendicular pipes something like this. There are so many perpendicular pipes which are connected to the main pipeline. So if this is your main pipeline, so these are the perpendicular pipelines. So all of them will receive water from this main pipeline. Now on each of these perpendicular pipelines, you have these rotating nozzles located like this. So these are the rotating nozzles which are situated here. Now from these rotating nozzles comes up the water like this. Right. So maybe the picture which I have drawn is little uh, in a different orientation. So if you look at it in the, uh, the correct orientation, I think in that case I should have drawn it otherwise. So I should have drawn it something like this. Let us suppose if this is your main pipeline and these are the perpendicular pipelines. And on these perpendicular pipelines you have the rotating nozzles located like this. And from here comes the water. Like here you can see, so these are the rotating nozzles and these are the perpendicular pipelines and these perpendicular pipelines are located to, are, I mean connected to the main pipeline. So let us suppose this is again a perpendicular pipeline connected to the main pipeline. This is another one connected to the main pipeline and this main pipeline gets water directly from the well. So what happens is all these pipes are joined to the main pipeline at a specific interval. So you see at specific interval the perpendicular pipelines are connected to the main pipeline. So water will flow through the main pipe under a pressure that is created due to this pump. So the pump will create a pressure because of which water will flow through the main pipe. And how the water escapes out? It escapes out through the nozzle 
rotating nozzles and that is how the entire field will get water and in this case no human labor is involved because nobody has to roam around the field to supply water the time is also less because it doesn't take much time for the water to travel through the main pipeline so it will happen within fraction of seconds so the entire field will get water at the same time also there will be e efficient distribution of water because whatever water is flowing out of these nozzles same amount of water will flow out of all the rotating nozzles that means every part of the field will receive uniform amount of water at the same time there is no wastage of water because as long as it is required to irrigate we will irrigate it when we think that okay we do not want any more water you can just switch off the pump so in that case there will be no water flowing into the main pipeline and therefore there will be no irrigation taking place and hence there will be no water wastage so in this case this type of system is extremely useful for uneven land with insufficient water because there is no water, wastage of water involved there. So that, that is also it is extremely useful for the areas where there is lack of water. So I hope you understood how the sprinkler system works. So here if you look at this picture this just gives you the idea how the main pipeline and the perpendicular pipelines are connected. So here you can understand this is the main pipeline and these are the perpendicular pipelines. Right? Okay. Now let us look at the second system that is the drip system. Drip system what happens instead of water sprinkling out here drops of water will be provided near the roots just at the roots drop of water will be provided so it is all the more trying to save more water so drip system is more efficient for areas which completely have very limited water supply so here water falls drop wise near the roots that is why it is called drip system drip is related to drops so here if this is the well so from the well again water will come to the main line so this is the main line now from this main line there is another sub main line so this was the main line this is the sub main line and from this sub main line you have the perpendicular pipelines right so these are the perpendicular pipelines and here everywhere you see it is connected where drops of water will come out so drops of water come out only near the root part so just look at this portion so this portion is wet only this portion of the soil is wet so it is just going to provide water drop wise not even uh, like the previous uh, sprinkler system the water will not flow out in the form of sprinkles just drop wise some water will ooze, ooze out from these uh, openings and it will fall only near the area of the root so this system is extremely useful because there is absolutely no wastage of water. In fact, there is no wastage of water and there is not much supply of water also. So this is going to be extremely useful for those areas where there is insufficient uh, water. So good for areas with less water. So that means you can see that both these sprinkler system and drip system, both of them, uh, both, both of these methods aim to save water. At the same time, it saves human effort as well as time. So these were some of the modern methods of irrigation. But by now you would have understood that irrigation is extremely important because without supplying water, all the efforts which have been put before irrigation will go waste. Therefore, it is very important that the field is irrigated on time, where either by natural rainfall or by artificial application of water. So now that we have discussed the modern methods of irrigation, so let us see if it could overcome the disadvantages associated with the traditional methods of irrigation. So these modern methods of irrigation, no human labor involved, whereas in traditional methods, human labor was involved either in the form of human beings or in the form of cattle or animals. So even though human labor or cattle is cheaper, at least in India, but it is quite less efficient. Here no wastage of water in uh, drip system or sprinkler system but in the manual methods or the traditional methods a lot of water get wasted. More efficient method because here water is being supplied evenly throughout the field also water is being supplied only when it is required so that means proper utilization of the water takes place but that is not the case for traditional method. 
So now it is actually very useful and our little friend agrees to it and he says that yes absolutely the modern methods of irrigation even though uh, it, it will be little expensive than the traditional methods because it involves uh, the usage of pump and the setup of the entire system either for drip system or sprinkler system but in the long run it is a lot more useful than the traditional methods of irrigation. Now, how do we ensure the water availability needed for irrigation? Because now we talked about so many different methods of irrigation, both traditional as well as modern methods. But for all of them, we need a source of water. Now, what would happen if you want to irrigate a field, but the nearby river is dried up, there is no water in the river, or if there is no water in the nearby well, because you need a source of water. If there is no water, how will you be able to uh, irrigate? Correct? So how do we ensure that water is always available for irrigation? Because just now we talked about the wells or the rivers or the canals, but all of them should have water. We need to make sure that water is always there. So irrespective of the weather conditions, what we can do is we can harvest the rain water. So whenever it rained, because we don't know when we want to irrigate the land. So what we can do is whenever it rained, we can utilize the rain water and we can store the rain water so that it can be used whenever required. So rain water harvesting is accumulation of rain water for reuse that is storage of rain water so that it can be used later. So whenever we need it maybe let, it, let us suppose uh, it rained now but I want the farmer want I want or the farmer wants to irrigate the land next month and next month it is not raining. So now you will say that okay, I will artificially irrigate, I will irrigate my field, but for that you need water, correct? Now let us suppose it, by some chance the nearby well has dried up, so you don't have water at all. So even if you use drip system, you need at least water, without water you can't do it, you utilize less water, but you need water for that. So what will you do then? So for that purpose, it is always advisable to store the rainwater so that it can be utilized later. So that you never arrive at a situation where there is no water at all. So rainwater harvesting is something which is in fact very common these days because we do not want to waste water. So whatever water we are getting in the form of rain, we want to make use of it. If not at that time, sometime later. So this is how a rainwater harvesting system looks like. So you can see the rainwater, uh, this is, I mean, th this is let us suppose it's a building or a house or whatever. So this is how the rainwater comes in and this is a rainwater storage where the entire water gets stored and then there are a couple of filters which will filter the rain water and then finally there will be a pump which will take it up to a tank. So here this water when the water is completely filtered and uh, it is absolutely stored at a particular place in that case the water can be utilized any time later whenever required. So that concept is called rainwater harvesting. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.